Hello and namaste guys I am Dr Anushruti and I'm back with an amazing episode Well I know that most of you are so much interested in sports but do you know that there is a proper training required to be in sports and also do you know that for you guys it is very important to know injury prevention and rehabilitation and who else would be better to tell you this than a physiotherapist so today on board i have dr jason park who is with us joined over here to tell you more about this well let's not waste time and directly speak to him hello dr jason how are you i'm good how are you dr anish thanks for having me thank you so much the pleasure is on me well i really want to know dr jason what was that one thing you know you thought about before joining this uh, field of medical why did you join physiotherapy um so i've always been involved with sports my whole life and um once i knew i couldn't go anywhere with it myself um i wanted to just stay involved with sports and athletics and just be able to help people get back to you know back from injuries or just have them continue to play um activities they love um and i found that physical therapy allowed us time to build relationships with clients and patients so you know seeing them from point a to point b or c um really was exciting for me and you know i thought it was really cool to you know have them for like a continuum of care absolutely great well dr jason what do you feel like how much is warm up required in sports in terms of warm up yeah like is it important because yeah. you, we know a lot of young players i would say who are very new to sports they often forget or ignore warm up before playing so what are your take on this yeah that's, that's important i think um and it's something i you know even go through on a regular basis with even like my recreational players right um so i think the warm up really depends on the person um some people just tend to take longer to warm up and some people um are quicker um depending on what their lifestyle is typically um if they're sitting at the desk all day you know then they're probably going to be stiff in their ankles hips you know back and that's not a good necessary recipe for let's say if you play golf or tennis it's not a good recipe for um you know protecting yourself Absolutely. so i think yeah yeah and i think it depends because honestly some people actually improve their performance as they go through let's say play so some people take you know longer to really warm up and get their bodies um right for whatever the sport is so i think some people need longer some people need you know shorter spans um yeah this makes sense moving on dr jason what are some common injuries you have come across in this field uh a lot of back pain um i would say back pain shoulder and knees um if if i had to be specific you know most of the people i manage and work with are dealing with aches and pains and they're trying to stay active around these injuries um or painful experiences um sometimes it's not really even an injury i would classify as um but you know i would get knee meniscus tears uh just generalized low back pain or unspecific low back pain uh disc herniations with sciatica um rotator cuff strains or you know tendonitis type of issues um are typically what i'm what i'm working with now okay oh uh, okay well now this is something you know like many of my followers would like to ask to you we have a lot of pediatric population in sports new kids doing judo karate taekwondo or tennis and cricket skating what not sports they are into right now because more than academics i believe today's kids are into sports so to make them understand the importance of warm up and their injury prevention like what is your approach as a sports physical therapist well first off it's great to hear 
um, any kids that are involved with sports. Um, that's kind of how I grew up. <laughs> I actually value sports more than academics myself um, until I got serious and, you know, physical therapy, all that stuff. Um, in terms of warm up, I think, you know, when it comes to kids and their bodies are changing, it's, it's a very important time that they do need proper warm up. Uh, but I think kids who are younger, uh, teens or adolescents in general have more flexibility typically. Um, so they're going to warm up a little bit quicker than, you know, we would be in our thirties and up, um, in terms of warm up, I would say, um, just generalized warm up like inchworms, uh, something dynamic where they're doing like jumping jacks to excite their nervous system, um, get their heart rate going, um, any, you know, squatting, just air squats, lunges, things like that. Um, if you're in a throwing, you know, sport, then something for the upper body, you know, you're doing uh, spinal turns, you're doing arm circles, things like that to, you know, really specify, you know, what body parts you're going to use the most for your sport, I think is the biggest thing to, to really focus on. Absolutely. Well, now uh, moving ahead, I mean, I would say a little far from sports physiotherapy, let's come to general physiotherapy. Now, we have a lot of kids in our, you know, uh, audience. We have seen a number of injuries and onsets or episodes of pain on different parts of the body in kids. Often people or the parents, what they tend to feel is that this is because of playing, this is because of sudden injury or sprain anything like that but what do you want to say to parents as a physical therapist to keep in mind of you know uh, pain of their kids because we have always heard about noticing your pain pain as an alarm system but often children's and kids pain you know are just neglected because even they themselves forget in the you know, uh, mean core of time. What do you want to say on this? Yeah, yeah. I would say um, just I think that being the biggest thing is listen to your kids because, um, you know, I think I think sometimes it's hard um, because, yeah, they might be just whining, but at the same time, um, there's probably some valid information you're, you're blocking out if you just ignore it. Um, I think I've had you know, parents tell me before, like, oh, we thought it was nothing. And then it became something bigger, right? Especially as they're going through puberty and their bodies are changing. I think it's important to at least understand, you know, um, what kind of movement limitations they have or, you know, if they're involved in sports, you know, how are they staying proactive to, to prevent or reduce maybe some type of injuries? So, you know, working with a physical therapist might help to you know, just give you a movement screen um, or understand if you're working with different trainers or things like that, like how do you, you know, stay healthy so that you can play your sport better um, and, and work around any aches that you might be developing, right? So early detection and early, you know, screening could help, you know, prevent something bigger. Absolutely. Moving on, Dr. Jason, I would like to introduce you one one of my segments of the show, uh, which is popular amongst my audience and followers and people actually wait for this segment throughout the episode. Now, what we do in this is I have a bunch of posts ready with me. Instagram posts. You are well aware of some Instagram self-proclaimed doctors who provide some basic and some very core in-depth knowledge. And people tend to follow everything they see on social media. Now, we have a certified degree holder in front of us. So why would we leave this chance to ask you the right question? So I have a bunch of posts ready with me. I will be stating the facts they have told. And you need to tell us if it is a fact or a myth and why so. So shall we start with this? Okay. Okay. So the first post says, lifting heavy weights makes you have lower back pain a lot throughout your life? I would say it's a myth. Um, it's, it really depends on technique, the intent of training, um, but on, you know, the volume that you're working in as well. Um, I think if you have to compete and you are constantly doing heavy, heavy loading, 
yeah, you might have joint issues later on, uh, but it's not guaranteed. I don't think there's a direct correlation of that um, from science and, and research, but also, you know, we see, you know, some really big lifters in the Olympic body, you know, um, Olympic lifting, bodybuilding communities, CrossFit that are fine, um, that are not really dealing with injuries, you know, um, injuries could always happen. I, I tell people all the time that if you're very sedentary, chances are you're going to, you know, have a more of a risk of developing, you know, arthritic conditions or something like that. Um, on some given chances, if, if your muscles are just not um, adaptable, trainable, or even understand positioning for everyday movement. So, um, yeah, I, I believe in strength training. I believe in, you know, having muscle um, hypertrophy and growth um, to optimize, you know, whatever physical stresses we have in our day to day, -to -day but also with our activities. So that's a myth. Another post says, Dr. Jason, Parkinson's disease is 100% treatable if you get to have a session with a qualified physiotherapist. 100% treatable as in like reversible or? Yes, yes. The post says that it is reversible. The person will be fine. I, I don't know if I agree with that. I think that's a myth. I think it's a, unfortunately, it's a, you know, it's a problem that is going to affect somebody for the rest of their lives, right? Whether it's, I think you can minimize it to optimize and slow the thing down, but I don't think it's going to be something where you can cure it fully um, with the current, you know, research and data we have on it, as well as the treatments we have. Um, but unfortunately it's, you know, it could be as severe as somebody just being very, you know, immobile um but you know right now i think between activities in physical therapy it can help but um i don't think we're going to be reversing it in any way so, no. mm, absolutely moving on the third post says mobility and flexibility are both the same things and you can achieve them by doing heavy workouts in the gym again this um, flexibility just tells us that it, you know, you have this, this range of motion, right? You have this ability to maybe even get to a toe touch, um, maybe have this joint motion in your hips. Um, but flexibility does not mean it's always a good thing. Some people might be compensated and they might have too much flexibility or movement in a specific area. Um, I think mobility is the more important thing and mobility is the ability to control that whole degree of uh, range of motion. So, you know, how do you, how does your body control uh, that hip movement? How does your body control your backwards or forwards? Um, I think it's more important. Absolutely. Well, bingo, you, and you can train. All the, yeah, please continue. <laughs> and you can train. To a, to a certain degree to, um, if, with proper strength training, I think you can improve flexibility and mobility, um, but it takes, you know, specific and conscious awareness of what you're doing. But I think for, from my perspective of doing this, you have to have, you know, optimal positioning and uh, the ability to get in and out of positions um, in order for you to even get to the, these adaptations. Because if somebody is blocked up and they just try to squat, you know, heavy, um, just to improve their hip flexibility, well, they're going to be stuck at some point. Yeah, so absolutely. So you need some type of basis to be able to allow you to work on the flexibility or mobility. Here, I would like to remind all of you to make sure and think twice before you follow anyone on social media and follow their tips. Do not forget to follow esteemed doctors like Dr. Jason Park on social media to have the authentic solutions to your problems. Moving on, Dr. Jason, last but not the least, I really want to know Dr. Jason's two biggest piece of advice for everyone listening and watching this episode from various parts of the world 
to have the great body everyone wants to have healthy fit mobile and flexible wow good question um i would say number one is get started um I know too many people that are sedentary and, you know, especially over here in America, it's a very big problem of, you know, different various diseases. Um, I have people, I'm in my thirties. I have friends that come see me sometimes and we do three basic exercises on day one and they are sore for two to four days. I'm like, dude, we just did, <laughs> we did lunges. We did, you know, mm -hmm. just some basic things. And I'm like, this is a problem. Um, so in terms of fitness, it's, it's, uh, either the extremes it's, it's, I think people go too much, you know, and too hard or people don't do enough. Um, so I would say get started, um, uh, wherever you are. Um, number two is make it a self experiment. Uh, don't compare yourself to others. Um, but also test and try things so that you can see if it's working or not. Um, but the science experiment tells me that if something's not working, you have to, you have to pivot, uh, something's not working. You have to get some help. Um, and, and if it is working, then you continue the process, but just try to, you know, make, make certain improvements or targeted goals as you go. Um, so you're always trying to be a better version of yourself and, um, you know, hopefully that gives you motivation, confidence, and empowers you to, you know, just take care of your body and then hopefully maybe even help others. Absolutely. Well, with this, we have come to an end of this episode and I would like to thank you, Dr. Jason, for taking out time from your schedule to speak to my audience and me. I really hope you enjoyed it and I really wish to see you on board on my show very soon. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much. This is your reminder to straighten your back, have a glass of water and move. Also, as Dr. Jason just said, do not compare yourself with others. So start loving your body. And if you do not love your body the way you are, so start working on it. We will see you on the next episode. Till then, see you. Goodbye. Take care. Okay.